We got the national anthem first. Very nicely done by a quartet there. The talent is a music with some athletic fields or Mediapolis has all kinds of talent, definitely. You were saying that you uh, recognize some of the names from the football team of Mid Prairie that are here on the basketball team as well, so. While they're announcing the, they're doing an alternating announcement of Mid Prairie and Mediapolis players. Well, we're getting ready to start the first quarter here. And uh, let me, sorry about that. We're having a little technical difficulty here on our first, well, at least my first dog cast. So I apologize for the dead airspace there. Sorry about that. Uh, looks like Mid Prairie is taking the court and here come the Bulldogs. So let's get this thing kicked off here in the doghouse.
down, puts up a jumper, it's off the rim and down. Nice move by Delton Scott. He got the pass and he quickly spun around and made a nice shot inside. Very nice ball movement there and left the Belknap wide open at the top of the key. So did I. I'll tell you what, that Miller is a put together kid though. I mean, he's a solid chunk of player right there. And he's being substituted for number 33, David Alderman. Uh, he's going in for him to give him a little breather because he did take a shot. Oh no. Yep. 
Raymond Buck makes a catch on the offside. Goes out to Scott out front. Goes to Dirk. Looks at the three pointer. Puts it up. It's off the rim. Raymond Buck gets the rebound, but I think he's going to miss it for a foul. Boy, that's huge. Yes. That's two fouls on him, and he's going to have to set out for at least the rest of this quarter. Yep. That was a little over the back. Uh, he was trying to get the rebound, and he was just kind of went over the back. That was a nice shot because I'll tell you what, Mediapolis has that smothering man to man again, and they're. They're doing a great job. Now the ball's up with number 12, and nice rebound going in there for number 44. Good follow-up offensive rebound and put back by Elijah. Number 31, Shallow was, yes. We've got some uh, substitutions. It looks like number 20, uh, Dalton Scott has taken an elbow to the face. He's got, he's bleeding a little bit there. Uh, of course, he has to come out of the game whenever you have, uh, it looks like he took one on the chin, actually. It looks like he may have split his chin. Nice job. That's one way to break that pressure. <laughs> Whoa. Somebody check his bus pass because he shot that one from downtown. I think coach may want to try to maybe take a time out here because it looks like Mediapolis has just got a little bit of the jitters right now. being hounded. Med Prairie is showing a lot of tenacity right now and a lot of go get them. I don't know that Mediapolis is quite prepared for the intensity that Mid Prairie is showing right now. Still a tight ball game though. I think if Mediapolis can get their passes and ball handling un under control, they're gonna be okay here. Fouled by Reed. And I'm not sure if Reed might be in a little bit of trouble himself, but maybe that's his first. So yeah, some fouls going on here, Kent. Yeah. 
there was three Bulldogs right there, and he was not going to get through that wall. They were not going to let him score. And Forrest Stellum was one of the three. I tell you what, right now, looking out through this crowd right now, Mediapolis is just kind of sitting back going, what is going on right now? Yes. Kind of a rough game. I mean, it's um, not a whole lot of just rough around the edges. Right? Ball handling by both teams is a little rough. Nice job. We've got Dalton Scott. Oops, excuse me, uh, wrong number. Uh, we got Brody Armstrong coming back in, as well as Dustin Belknap. Belknap was, uh, yep. Kind of a rough quarter. Uh, I think a little bit of the jitter setting in and uh, hopefully coach can get them calmed down a little bit, get their ball handling back under control. Some ill-advised passes there. I think they were trying to push a little bit too hard, coach, uh, trying to break that press. I think like you said earlier, they need to drive through some of these screens. We were without a leader. He's going to have to play tentative but strong, and that's hard to do when you are of the nature that Jordan Wagenbach is. <laughs> I know from experience. Definitely going to have to start taking care of those defensive rebounds. You cannot let them get an offensive rebound and those easy putbacks. Well, 
Wow. He, your muscle, you said muscle, muscled was right. He muscled that. Yes, we had a moving screen on number 25, Runciman. And really picked him off. <laughs> no, there was, uh, yeah, there was nothing there to hit where he put that ball, so. I'm really kind of surprised, too. It's a very solemn crowd right now, and we could really use some picking up here. <laughs> no, it's been pretty slow. Forrest was just a little slow getting there. And he knew it. You could see it on his face. He knew it was slow getting there. <laughs> that was my philosophy. And the way uh, Mid Prairie is shooting free throws, not a bad thing so far. <laughs> yes, that uh, raging bull look. Wagenbach brings it up the left side over to Scott. Scott back to the top over to Gerst. Gerst is driving in off the right side over to uh, okay, I'll let you take over. I'm <laughs> yes, it is. We definitely got to find a body to put, put you know, to take care of. Nice job. Here comes Mid Prairie right back. Nice cross court pass there. Uh, good defense down low by Scotty. Keeps the top ball out of there. As I said, he'll help us on the defensive end. Wagenbach brings it up the floor, stops and pops. Good job. Mid Prairie's taking a timeout. They've seen enough. Bulldogs now lead 21 to 18 with 504 to go in the uh, second quarter. Yeah, we're starting to look at the press and their coach is gonna, he's either gonna get out of it or he's gonna make an adjustment. I mean, I'm guessing he's gonna try to get the press. It seems to me like that's what they're out there. So we're starting to look at cross court pass. We're looking at the initial inbound pass and then to the middle of the floor and then outside this cross court is Gerson. He's loving this, he's getting some layups. <laughs> No. Uh, both Gerst and Wagenbach do a good job using their body to block the defender. If anything, it's they're going to score and make it a three, you know, the old-fashioned three, but they get their body wedged in there when they go for that layup. So they're doing a good job. And like you said, Coach, they are breaking this, this uh, press up, which I know Mid Prairie loves to do. So let's see what adjustments they make. I think uh, Coach Worrell is just uh, saying, look, guys, keep it up. You're, you're, you're getting in the groove now. Whoa! <laughs> Little hard. First 
Michael Hamlet out on the point. He comes down over the way and on the right side. There's Belknap on a nice cut. Nice. Very well done. Beautiful pass. Was able to lay it right in like you should do. Uh-oh. Brody Armstrong. A little hard. That's true. Yeah, we're starting to show our feet just a little bit slow with the Bulldogs. They're just not as sharp as they need to be getting back defensively. Um, they're just, and I'll tell you why, Mid Prairie is pressing. They are pushing constantly, driving to the basket. That is... Belknap did a good job grabbing that. And Mid Prairie's pushing. Wow. We are tied. They're still going with a half court press right now, so Gerst is now directing the offense. We needed that one. Definitely got to keep the ball moving. But number 20, Fassett. Oh, no, stolen away a second chance. And again, Fassett steals that. Yeah. And coach is not happy. And it's not like in football where you can throw it crisply. A basketball that far just does not move that fast. Yeah. And like you said, the press is looking for that. They want you to do that. They're baiting you to do that. So you've got to be smart enough not to do that. Uh, 
I think Coach has got them fired up now. Let's see what they do. Let's just go out here and do what they know they can do. Nice. That offense worked just like you draw it up. Just off. Stimson. They're leaving him alone out there. He forced that one. Over to Miller. Yep. Nice job of breaking it there, but number 25, Runtsman, did a nice job blocking that. No. No, he was up very quickly on that one. I think. He's going to be very difficult to, uh, because he's so big, to move out of the way, but he has a very de deliberate shot, like you say, so he's got to be careful. And we're doing a little substitute. Yeah, we're making sure Jordan doesn't get a, a, a late foul here. Nice block. Oh, now they at least can go in seeing that. <laughs> With authority. Very true, very true. I mean, there was some things happening there. You don't want to see some ill-advised passing. Uh, we're not getting some of the, the offensive board, or excuse me, defensive block out, keeping them from the offensive boards. I'm sure there's a lot that Coach is going to go in and talk about. I'm sure taking care of the ball is one of them. Blocking out and getting the rebounds will be another. Otherwise, I think they did a good job most of the time breaking down the full court press and taking care of their end of things it's just when they got hurried and maybe when when Jordan had to come out and when when Dalton Scott had to come out they lost a little bit of the leadership and they just kind of weren't in sync so hopefully we can keep those two guys in there keep them out of foul trouble keep them from getting another split chin um, I'm sure that doesn't feel real good but I know he's a trooper he's going to come through with that all right but a lot of things to talk about at half coach a lot of things to get better at, but like you said, it could have been worse. We saw what happened at the JV game before. You know, at halftime, all of a sudden turned around and just took total control of the game in the second half. So 
I'm betting that we can do that again here with the varsity because, you know, you just got to figure they've got it in them to get it done. Just take care of the small things. He was hitting a lot of outside shots there, Kip, Coach. Alderman has been a pure hustle job for them in that first half. He came out and really gave them a spark. Yes. I think a lot of what we saw was Mid Prairie pushing the entire time. They were getting down the floor faster than we could get back on defense, and that was allowing them those looks because the first place you naturally go is towards the paint. You, you gravitate to the basket not to give them the easy layup, and that leaves that trailer that even though he's pushing down the floor, he comes out on there and he's open for that three. So. Yeah, I think Coach will probably be talking about getting back on defense after a, a rebound or uh, an interception, as you will, or whatever, a knocked away pass, and just getting on a body on a body. And they were doing a good job of follow-up shots. We weren't getting them blocked out. They were coming up and, and getting second chances. No. Mentally, we're going to have to be sharper. We, you know, we had touched on it there. We, we kind of let ourselves throw some bad, ill-advised passes. We thought we could get away with something. They were too quick, too hustling, and took away those long passes. So we're going to have to be sharper, smarter. We're just going to have to take care of the ball, come down and score. And we showed our offense can score when we move the ball around. And if you take it inside, it collapses that zone back, and then you will have your outside shots. <laughs> Knowing the fire that's inside that young man, I'm sure he will too. Well, let me touch on something here. Uh, let the Meepo group wrap it up this season. Eat, let the Meepo group ease some of the stress of Christmas. You do the shopping and they'll do the wrapping. Bring unwrapped, preferably boxed gifts to the Medi Mediapolis City Hall on Friday, December 14th from 5 to 9 p.m. or Saturday, December 15th from 9 to 4 p.m. And the Meepo group will wrap the gifts and send them home ready to be placed under the tree. If you are physically unable to take the gifts to be wrapped, the Meeple Group will be happy to help you with the pickup and delivery free of charge. If simply not wanting to think about <clears throat> dropping off and pickup, call 394-9403 and the Meeple Group will do both for $5. If wanting to get involved or to donate supplies, please call 394-9403. Supplies may be dropped off on Monday, December 10th at 6.30 p.m. at the school's elementary 
Library or Friday, December 14th at City Hall. Don't forget the community Christmas dinner is scheduled. The annual Mediapolis Community Christmas Dinner is scheduled for Saturday, December 8th at noon in the Banquet Room at 61 Chop House. I can't believe they're doing back-to-backs like this. I'm really surprised at that because I know in high school, well, okay, we're talking a couple of decades ago, thank you very much, but it was always Tuesdays and Fridays, you know, and that's unless inclement weather or makeup games, but that happened very rarely. But um, yeah, this is kind of, uh, kind of strange, I guess. Maybe the playoffs had something to do with that? Yes. Well, definitely the way they're going at each other tonight. Yes, you're right. There's going to be some tired bodies. And to think they got to go to school tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. And it gets some experience too. That way you can be subbing in with confidence, which you will have to do as the season goes on, whether it's due to injury or fouls. You've got to be able to substitute with confidence. Well, let me run down the list of some of our Dogcast sponsors while I've got a moment here. Mediapolis Telephone Company, the Eland Agency, DMC Mutual, Meepo Booster Club, Creative Visions, Dalzell Brothers, Ertz Carpet, U.S. Gypsum Company, Great River Medical Center, SG Construction, Brewer Agency, Mediapolis Savings Bank, Hawkeye Pender Shop, Prairie Ridge, Myers Construction, The Mediapolis News, Main Street Tire, Deb Massner Real Estate, Meepo Foods, Mediapolis Vet Clinic, Right Electric, Roads, CMA Services, Two Rivers Bank, Morning Sun Farm Implement, Standard of Beaverdale, and Cafe Old World. Thank you all for all of your sponsorship and all you do for the Dogcast. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you listening. My name is Lee Kerr. This is Ken Harshbarger. We're about ready to start the second half of the boys' varsity basketball game against Mid Prairie. I just saw, I just read his lips, Kent, and the first thing he said to him was, you've got to move your feet faster. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I did see something right. I don't know. I'm no coach, but uh, I, think he, I think he knows that uh, maybe we've got to just move back on defense faster and get ready for these guys because they're not going to let up. Hall. Runciman. Very patient job by the Bulldogs. They passed it around until they found the open man they were looking for. Staying with that press.
Boy, do they push the floor. Mid Prairie ball. I think they got impatient with that offense. They need to just take their time. Yeah, you can't leave them that wide open. They're going to make shots all day long. Nice. That's what ball movement will do for you. So that cuts the uh, Bulldog deficit to uh, 38-35 with uh, just under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Hawks have the ball. Being very patient with it themselves. Hall has the ball. Now he stops and pops. And he gets yes, he does. He's got a nice soft touch. He just knows how to shoot it. They break the press. They have to be conscious of him. Forrest is going in for Belknap. I don't think Coach liked that pass. <laughs> nice job by Scott. Got a hand on there and got it knocked away. Good job. Nice call. Yes. Wow. S smart move by Stellern. He was going out of bounds with the ball, threw it off of the Mid Prairie player. Great heads up play to, to uh, retain possession of that ball. Looks like Stimson is in, and um, I'm not sure who the other one came in. Looks like we've got an update. Uh, 
looks like uh, the dogs came out on top in the first duel tonight, the Bulldog wrestlers. Coach Cumming and his staff uh, did a great job of getting those boys in a uh, shape, and uh, he steals a lot of pins out of his desk. Uh, be nice to Coach Orth, the guy can ball, says Smith. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like the wrestlers. Uh, He was doing that in the first half. Well, they're being patient with the offense. Over to Belknap. Yeah, we're not moving. We got Elijah Wolf came in, I believe, for Gerst. Uh, he's in the game now for Caleb Gerst. And yeah, the mid player, uh, yeah, looks like he, he's got something wrong with his right eye. Well, that's one for Dalton Scott on the chin. <laughs> I guess you could say an eye for a chin. 42 to 35 here in Vernon Bud McLaren Court. 237 left in the third quarter. Nice job. It's been a while since we scored, so that's good to see. 37 42 now, the Bulldogs trail. The wide open look for a run. Yeah, it looks like at times we're just not sure where we need to be defensively because we shouldn't have these guys doing that. Yeah. <laughs> And we got a substitution in, number 31, Shala in for number 41, Siren, Riley Siren. Looks like Miller is going back in the game for Mid Prairie, taking out Hall. <laughs> Wagenbach was the only one who wanted to keep a hold of it. Good job by Forrest. Yes. Dalton Scott and uh, Wagenbach are out, Caleb Gerst and uh, Arms Brody Armstrong are in for them. Yeah, we're... 
we've got too many bodies standing in the same place. We've got three guys who just, they're not, they're not setting a screen for each other. They're not moving to the ball. They're not, you're right. You can't break the press if you don't move your body. Wow. I'd like to say uh, hi to Hanny, Hannah Hilliard listening from Ames. Hello. Yeah, we haven't been able to shut him down. And mid prayer still with that press, and we uh, mishandled by Gerst there. Uh, we can't be having that. I don't know if they, they think they've just got to rush, 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 rush. But yeah, you want to look at the clock. You want to, but the best thing to do is, is do what you need to do. Make crisp passes, run your offense. You know, we can't lose our minds here. You've got to do what you know you can do. We opened that quarter with one of the most beautiful offensive plays that we have. Great ball movement, wide open, nice jump shot. We've kind of gotten away from that again. It's we we become involved in this rush that we really don't need to be involved in. Ball movement isn't necessarily long passes. It's crisp passes around the perimeter to where the defense can't react. And like you said, into the center as well. Shala. It just seems like we're, our feet are tired tonight. Nice shot. And World takes a timeout here. Yes. I mean, like. Good ball movement. Good crisp ball movement. Give it to the guys you know can score. No, they're, they're able to split us a lot. Yeah. 
Gerst into Beckman. I, I was going to say there was a lot of shoving going on in there. And he got number 25. Uh, yeah. He's claiming he got shoved. <laughs> There's definitely been some physical activity down on that block. Ah, oh, there you have that timeout again. Yeah. He was. <laughs> I I saw that too. I thought it was just me, but everybody just kind of stopped. And went, okay, is it traveling or is it a foul? <laughs> Well, it's 51-42, Mid Prairie ahead of the Bulldogs. With 6.32 left in this game, it's Mid Prairie's ball. They'll inbound. They're too quick for that. Number one sin is giving up the baseline. You don't want to give up that baseline when you're a defender because that's what's going to happen. A nice slicing move into the basket, score, and the foul plus one. We've got some confusion out on the floor. The referees are talking right now. Ah. Looks like they're working it out right now. Well, you know. Anyway, Miller's going to shoot a free throw. That's what we know. <laughs> Go with what we know. There's three the old fashioned way, as you say. It was getting close. That's what they're waiting to do. And like you said, they can use that line as a defender. Now, he's definitely got the arm length. You see Mid Prairie is taking their time because time is on their side. And there it is. Went up strong. 
You might get away with that pass one time like Mediapolis did, but they turned around and tried to throw it immediately again, and they got it. You, you just can't keep doing that. So, no. And, and another ill-advised pass. Right now, Mid Prairie is just plain out hustling us. And we just keep making those late passes out for us. They're just, and their zone is really good. I mean, yes. Yes. Well, we were talking about, you know, they don't have a whole lot of size, but their speed is, is killing us. And knows killed, right? <laughs> yes. Making him work, and there, there's that defender you were talking about. <laughs> Dalton Scott going in for, uh, looks like. Yes. Well, it looked like both of them were coming out. <laughs> we might want to put two in. Looks like number 13. Uh, Hoffman is in for number five, Hall. Yes, it was, and he, he's, he's pleading his case, but I think Runtzman knows he, got, he chopped it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You don't want, you don't want to make that. that. Another. Yeah, I I thought it was clean too, but we don't know what uh, what he might have done with his hip. Yep, I've heard that a few times in my day. <laughs> You don't want to be doing that this late in the game either because. Yes. Yes. Runtzman's, yeah, he's bleeding his case again. No. That's right. Definitely. Definitely need these. First one's up. In and out. When it's going bad, it's going bad, isn't it, Coach? Which, is, which amazes me a little bit. That's very true. Might have been compensating. Definitely. Yep. 
And they're very content to do that. Run it right down to the shot clock. Exactly. And there, there Jordan was trying that. He fought through that, that screen. There goes Miller. He goes in and, or Alderman, excuse me. See, we can't let him do that either. Yeah. Yeah, we got to make something happen. At least make an effort to knock that ball away or or start anticipating where that ball's going to go. Yep. That was that spark we needed, though. I mean, that why why haven't we been doing that all night? That was a good play. Don't foul. Yeah. I remember those days as well. Um, my poor free throw shooting butt always made it to the bench in those. <laughs> yes, I often found myself sitting at this time of the game. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> We got to. We got to try to make something happen. And what's difficult is when you do it against a team that's good at it. You've got you've got no other choice. Well, Forrest. <laughs> That's all right, Forrest. He went after it. There you go. <laughs> well, I imagine. Oh, left it a little long. Well. Exactly. He was anticipating the contact and and yes. That was not good. Yep. And there they, they go back into that time killing mode. We now here come now here comes Belknap. He's coming out there trying to force them to do something. You got to. And look what happened last time. Well, we're under a minute now. Yeah. Forrest tried. I mean, he, he gave it his effort. Yep. And I think, is that number five on? Yep. You know what? He tried. He. That's right. Hey, I always looked at it that way. They give you five for a reason. You might as well use them all. That's right. You don't get to, you know, it's not like vacation. You can't roll it over to the next game. Yeah, 
Yeah. We've got uh, number 34, Clayton Musselman coming in. Looks like number 44, Elijah Wolf coming in. Yeah, JV game, yep. He comes in there for Armstrong, Brody Armstrong, and it looks like uh, number 40. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I would take his uh, uh, his extra point percentage as a free throw percentage. That'd work for me. tenacious they they know where they what they got to do they go after it. they go hard to the hole they're very quick so what they don't have in size they definitely have for in tenacity and speed which can be a very good combination for a ball club especially with Mediapolis tonight who's